Hi, my name is Sean Boyle, and today we're going to talk about automatic transmissions and their solenoids. There are two different types of solenoids you might find in an automatic transmission. An on-off type, or a pulse width modulated type. A solenoid failure could give you symptoms ranging from a check engine light, to wrong gear starts, to harsh shifts, soft shifts, or possibly limp-in, where the transmission only works in one forward gear. Here on the transmission dyno, we have the GM 4L60E transmission to use as an example. After I pull the oil pan off, and after I pull the oil filter off, you can see the valve body, all the solenoids, and the wiring that connects the solenoids to the harness. This solenoid is the electronic pressure control solenoid. It's pulse width modulated. This solenoid is the torque converter control solenoid, which is also pulse width modulated. And this solenoid is the torque converter clutch on off solenoid. Solenoid A and solenoid B. Solenoid A is also called the one two shift solenoid and it's on off. Near solenoid B, which is also called the two three shift solenoid and it's also on off. Not all transmissions contain their solenoids internally. Here I have some Honda transmissions with externally mounted solenoids. These solenoids are called linear solenoids and they are pulse width modulated. These solenoids are on off type solenoids such as their shift solenoids and torque converter clutch control solenoids. These transmissions are the common 41TE units manufactured by Chrysler which also contains their solenoids externally. In this video, I am going to focus on the simple operation of an on-off type solenoid. This solenoid uses electromechanical force to move a plunger internal to the solenoid. This plunger will either open a hydraulic passage or block it off. And the action of releasing hydraulic pressure or holding it will move a shift valve or a control valve on the end of the solenoid. Another common type of solenoid which is a bit more complicated is a pulse width modulated type or PWM. These solenoids typically have lower resistance and pass more current. Pulse width modulated is also known as a linear solenoid, electronic pressure control solenoid, force motor, or simply pressure control solenoid. Their purpose is to vary the amount of hydraulic pressure in a circuit. They can control overall line pressure, pressure to a clutch, or pressure to another valve within the valve body. This pulse width modulated solenoid assembly is a linear solenoid from Honda which they call Clutch Pressure Control Solenoids, or CPC for short. Here is another solenoid assembly from Honda with CPC solenoids on one side and on-off type solenoids on the other side. This solenoid pack is from the Chrysler 41TE which includes four pulse width modulated solenoids that directly control clutches. This is the General Motors Transmission Electro Hydraulic Control Module, or TECM. This has pulse width modulated solenoids, on off solenoids, and even the transmission control module in one unit. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to focus on the simple on off type solenoid. This on off solenoid can either open or seal off a hydraulic passage. Fluid enters the tip of the solenoid. When the solenoid is off, the fluid can exhaust through these rectangular sections in the solenoid body. When the solenoid is energized, electromechanical force from the coil pushes a plunger, which pushes a check ball against the seat in the solenoid body and seals off the passageway. With the passageway sealed, pressure can build at the tip of the solenoid 
and force a valve to shuttle. Here I have a cutaway of a 4L60E valve body so you can actually see the valves and how they stroke within their bores. This solenoid controls the position of this 2-3 shift valve. If you notice on the left side of the valve the surface area is smaller than the surface area on the right side of the valve. When the solenoid is off, fluid can vent out of the solenoid and release all of the pressure. Hydraulic force on the left side of the valve will shuttle the valve to the right. When the solenoid is energized and sealed off, hydraulic pressure will build on the right side, forcing the valve over to the left. So there are only two positions that this valve normally operates in. It's either going to be shuttled to the right or to the left. With shift solenoid A, they use a spring, and the spring shuttles the valve to the right. With the solenoid on or energized, fluid cannot vent out and pressure builds. The resulting force overcomes spring pressure and shuttles the valve. When the solenoid is off, fluid pressure can vent out and the spring returns the valve. So once again, when the solenoid is turned on and pressure builds, it will force the valve over against spring pressure. The fluid that feeds these solenoids come through tiny orifices located in the valve body spacer plate. They're called solenoid feed orifices. As you can see, their holes are very small. Fluid pressure finds its way to the solenoids through these tiny feed holes. When the solenoid is energized and fluid travels through these feed holes, it will get trapped between the solenoid and the valve and shuttle the valve over. When the solenoid is de-energized, fluid traveling through the holes will exhaust out through the rectangular vents in the solenoid body. Here we see the bottom of a shift solenoid. This is the portion where the check ball seats and seals off the hydraulic passage. When compared to the hole in the spacer plate that feeds these solenoids, you can see it's much larger. The solenoid should not have any problem exhausting any fluid that finds its way through those feed holes. Here is another example of how an on-off solenoid works. In this torque converter clutch solenoid, fluid enters through the tip of the solenoid it travels through the body and exhausts out of these rectangular vents. When the solenoid is energized, it traps the fluid in the solenoid body will end up shuttling the valve. So the fluid enters through that tip to exhaust. It fits in to the end of this valve bore right here. And the fluid that feeds that solenoid is going to travel through this small orifice, just like on the spacer plate with the shift solenoids. The opening that the solenoid can create is much larger than the feed orifices. In this example, I'm going to show you using air pressure on how the solenoid can shuttle the torque converter clutch valve. I'm going to pump air through the orifice and it will end up initially leaking out of the torque converter clutch solenoid. When I energize the solenoid, you can see the valve move and shuttle back and forth. You can hear the sound change because when the solenoid seals off the passage, there is some air leakage around the valve and the valve bore. I'm using about 40 psi of air pressure and you can see that is enough pressure to stroke that valve properly in its bore. There are many different ways to test a solenoid. Each has their advantages and disadvantages. One thing to remember is to match the operating conditions with the test. Meaning if the vehicle was hot when it failed, the transmission failed, check the solenoids while they're hot. If the vehicle is cold and the transmission failed, check the solenoids when they're cold. One of the simplest tests 
would be to use a scan tool. On this vehicle, with the 4L60E transmission, the scan tool would display whether or not the shift solenoids had an open or short to power or short to ground. So it can detect these hard faults, but if you had high resistance or if the solenoid wasn't working properly, the scan tool would not have a PID to display that. Another test you can do with the scan tool is command the solenoid either on or off. Here I have the one, two shift solenoid selected. I can turn the solenoid on and off using my scan tool and I can listen for a click. There it is. Do it one more time. This verifies that the solenoid can be controlled by the computer. It also verifies that there's something mechanical moving in the solenoid. What it doesn't verify is if it's working hydraulically. This next test takes the scan tool to another level. With the ability to control my solenoid on and off, I'm going to use a low amp current probe and a DVOM when I'm going to actually measure the amount of current that's flowing through my solenoid as I command the solenoid on and off using my scan tool. I'm going to place this low amp current probe around a wire that I jumpered where the fuse normally goes. So now when I turn the solenoid on, I'll actually see the amount of current that's flowing to the solenoid. First, I'm going to zero out my low amp current probe so my meter reads close to zero. Now when I turn the solenoid on, the number that I read, the amount that I read on my DVOM is going to be the milliamps that I have going through the solenoid. In this case it's 526 milliamps. It's displayed as millivolts, 52.2 millivolts, but what this low amp current probe does is it converts one millivolt is equal to 10 milliamps. So as 10 milliamps flows through that wire, this tool outputs one millivolt. So that's the reason why I see 53.7 millivolts, which is equal to 53.5, in this case, milliamps. That's just about a little over half of an amp. So now using Ohm's law, if I use voltage over amperage, I could figure out the resistance. So a half of an amp goes into 12 volts about 24 times, roughly speaking. So that means I've got about 24 ohms of resistance in this circuit. These solenoids are normally between 20 and 40 ohms, so that's a good solenoid. Turn it off. You see the amperage drop low again. So this not only checks the electrical side, but also checks the ability for my computer to control the solenoid. And if I can hear it clicking, I can tell that mechanically something's moving. But I still don't know if the solenoid is sealing properly. Here I have the ability to take my scan tool test to yet another level. I still have the ability to control the solenoid on or off, but with my oscilloscope hooked up, I can actually look at the voltage change and the amperage change. The blue trace on top is voltage. The scope is tapped into the ground wire for the torque converter clutch solenoid in this example. And the red trace is amperage the amp clamp is wrapped around that same wire. So when I turn the solenoid on and off, right now it's off, when I turn the solenoid on, I'll see the amperage increase. I see the voltage drop because now the voltage is being dropped across the solenoid and I see the amperage increase. When I turn the solenoid off, I see the inductive kick from the magnetic field around the solenoid collapsing and I see the amperage go back down to zero. On. Off.
My least favorite test is a simple resistance test. It's very easy to do, especially if you have the solenoid out in front of you. You just hook your ohmmeter leads up across this and measure the resistance. It's, but the disadvantage of it is that it's only going to check the electrical resistance of the solenoid. It won't prove that the solenoid has the ability to seal off, and it doesn't prove that the solenoid can operate mechanically. Another thing is you need to isolate the circuit when you check a solenoid for resistance. If it's in the vehicle still or in the transmission, you'll have to isolate the circuit by either disconnecting electrical connectors and disconnecting power like the battery or a fuse, or you're going to have to install a test harness and you have to have something like this available where you can plug this into the transmission and gain access to the wires directly to do an ohmmeter test. If you do have the transmission on the bench, Checking the solenoids with an ohmmeter is pretty simple to do. An even better test would be to energize it and push air through the solenoid while turning it on and off. Once again, it would be best to do this test while the transmission is hot or the solenoid is hot. This would prove that the solenoid is working mechanically, hydraulically, and electrically. I hope this video shed some light on how the on-off type solenoid works. Stay tuned for another video on how a pulse width modulated solenoid operates and different ways that you can test and verify its function. Thanks again.